The Fool's international affairs editor now, uh, Armand Georgian, is uh, on set with me. Armand, good to see you again. Uh, now, um, we heard that speech uh, from the Spanish Prime Minister, uh, and interestingly, he said that these uh, special powers, this uh, Article 155, is not meant to take away any liberties from the Catalan people, but rather uh, to protect them. Certainly, that's uh, not the way it's being seen in Catalonia. Well, obviously, it depends on who you ask. And he played very much on that idea of the silent majority, mm. the, the Catalans who are not out in the streets, not protesting either for or against independence, but are simply worried about what's going to happen and who don't know whether they're in an independent republic or not. So he was very much playing, uh, playing on that. But uh, again, uh, we don't really have so far uh, a clear idea of how any of these things are going to be implemented. I mean, the two key measures that he actually announced, so there were four broad objectives, pro four broad political objectives, but two actual concrete measures. One was the dismissal of President Puigdemont and his entire cabinet. Uh, Rajoy did not explain how that would physically happen. And number two, uh, the second concrete measure, Parliament will be allowed to continue to meet. However, uh, the president, that's to say Puigdemont, will not be allowed to propose his candidacy as president because technically he will have been sacked, right? Um, so those are the two concrete things. But again, it's a bit academic in the sense that Puigdemont will obviously say well, I don't recognize these decisions. Madrid has no right to sack me. And therefore, for him, the, the idea that he can't propose his candidacy to Parliament doesn't even apply because for him, he hasn't been sacked. He won't recognize that uh, decision in the first place. So for him, the question of can I propose my candidacy to Parliament or not, that doesn't even come up because he won't recognize any of these measures that have been announced by Madrid. So once again, we get back to the key question, how is all this going to be enforced? And will he be arrested? All of this, uh, this is where, where we have to uh, try to, you know, look at the small print or perhaps the large print uh, when it's actually circulated among members of Senate. Um, what are, what is in, exactly in these provisions? How, uh, how is the, go how is the Catalan government going to be removed physically? A week ago in Rajoy's statement last Saturday, he said an organization would be designated to deal with those questions, with those issues. But um, he didn't give any more details of what that organization was in his address to Senate today. Now, and also, what's interesting also is that uh, the Catalan leader, Carlos Puigdemont, has so far refused to, to declare independence outright. He hasn't called uh, regional elections. And uh, what's interesting is that the Spanish prime minister today, in that speech to Senate, said, you know, there's, there's a lot of confusion uh, around, around this. Uh, uh, all we needed was a, a simple yes or no, and uh, neither yes nor no came through. So could he be seen, so could rather... Carlos Puigdemont be seen as stalling and surely uh, these uh, supporters of, of, of independence in, in Catalonia are, are disappointed. Well, I, it's it's interesting that uh, both speeches, you know, Carlos Puigdemont's speech yesterday in the Catalan Parliament and the and Rajoy's speech to the Spanish Parliament today, they're kind of mirror images of mm. each other. I've exhausted all options. You know, I gave him opportunities that he didn't take. Right, they're they both, accusing each other of doing the same thing. They're both saying exactly the same right. thing to each other. And uh, so it's, you know, they, they, they've both put themselves in a position where they have no choice but to go further down the same path, neither of them can make a U-turn in public. But what's interesting, Rochelle, is remember that interview we did uh, last night with the former deputy mayor of Barcelona, who mm. was telling us about the back channels, which I found very interesting, uh, that there was an attempt to mediate by uh, uh, the, the president of the Basque region, but according to... Uh, Antony Vivas, the former deputy mayor of Barcelona, they stalled because hardline MPs in Madrid didn't want Rajoy to go ahead with it. Uh, but um, again, we don't know exactly, of course, this is all backroom stuff. But certainly the public face is one of, you know, I've tried everything. I've given the other side opportunities. It's their fault, basically. Mm. But the back channels is something that is still worth looking at because uh and Sarah Morris was telling us about this in Madrid as well, that actually uh, uh, 
President Urkulu of the Basque Country was not the only intermediary in all of this. It's just mm. that both sides didn't want to talk about it publicly. But certainly there are back channels that are still available if both sides do want to avail themselves of those back channels in the next few days. Mm. And it's interesting that the Socialist Party, uh, as Sarah was telling us in Madrid, they're still trying to table these amendments which say if by some chance there's a U-turn, if the Catalan executive does, after all, call for regional elections, we should still call off Article 155. Um, so, that, you know, there are some political forces in Spain still hoping for some kind of way out. But it does, I have to say, look increasingly unlikely because now Rajoy, as we heard, he wants to sack the entire executive. So if that happens, then it's hard to see how that sacked executive could then call regional elections. So I think the windows are kind of closing here. Okay. Armin, thank you very much for that. Uh